Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today's gonna be really fun. I finally got the Emacs Baby Hawk in. I wanna do a thorough review on this one. I'm gonna be doing an unboxing, kind of a setup inspection and flight test using FPV goggles and the Tyrannus Q7 transmitter. Doing a line of sight flight, doing an FPV flight, recording the video in the goggles and having that up on the screen so you can see how that looks and telling you what I think about it at the end in the pros and cons. So without further ado, let's get started. So it comes in this nice hard box, this hard cardboard. All it is is a slide open cardboard box, nothing special here. Very simple where the top cover just slides off. And this gets us to the Baby Hawk. Now, as you can see, I've already done something to it. It doesn't come with the antennas up like this. And I'm gonna show you what I did after we unbox it. Here's the instruction manual here. And the first tier is just like a foam protective tier here. Take that off and check this out. So there it is, the Baby Hawk sitting there ready to fly. So this is an RTF, this is a bind and fly obviously because we need to bind it to our controller. And this one did not, actually it's not a bind and fly. This is, um, you have to add your own receiver on this one that I got. I think they do make a bind and fly, but I went ahead and put in a little micro FR Sky receiver in there. Um, I will have the link in that down in the description below the video so you can check that out. Um, it was pretty easy. All you do is connect it to the flight controller. I did have to solder it in. I wanted to solder it in so you can see the pins there are soldered. It does come with its own little um, sleeve of shrink wrap so you can shrink wrap it to protect the receiver in and then all I did was the antennas that come out I just kind of heated the shrink wrap pushed it up shrink wrap the antennas up here so they have a little bit more rigidity to keep out of the propellers and I put on some of those braces rubber bands they're kind of like these clear rubber bands and um, they're really tight and strong. And I just kind of wrap those around the camera to hold the antennas up in this formation for some better range coverage. So we'll see how this works. I haven't flown it yet, but we'll see how it works out there when we do our flight test. Anyway, here's the quad. It comes with these two inch, three blade by 45, 4.5 byte um, propellers. They, they are all screwed onto the motors already. They take four screws and they already have the prop guards mounted up. So anyway, further inspection, here's the camera. So a nice wide angle built-in camera that's got its own VTX. You can change the channels in the camera right here with this button there. You can see that little button there underneath the antenna I have here, right there. I really do like how this thing is set up. Of course, there's not really any camera protection, so if you do crash really hard on the camera, you may um, tweak it. I mean, it is one of those standard cameras that has a really good case in here. So unless you hit it really hard right here, you won't really break the camera lens off. As far as the body goes, I'm really liking it. It's kind of just a plastic unibody. It's like a two-tiered, and it has these clips here, and then it's got um, screws over here to hold on the camera tower, and it's also got screws to kind of hold it all together. There's these two screws here to hold the sandwich halves together. But I'm thinking this is gonna be really durable. Everything is just kind of squeezed in there. You know, the arms are so short that I think the propeller guards are gonna take the brunt of the hit if you do crash. So I don't anticipate really breaking any arms or having any trouble on this one. I think it's gonna take a lot of abuse and we're gonna test that in our flight test. Here's a battery strap already pre-mounted and this one actually will take two to three S. I've heard some people actually being successful with three S. I'm gonna be using the two S that came with my Wakara 110 Rodeo. Since this doesn't come with any batteries, I'll be using this. And if I kind of get gutsy, I'll go ahead and use this three S battery as well, this um, nanotech battery, and see if it can handle the three S after we fly with the two S. Anyway, there's a couple more things in the box. So I just want to take those out before we do the flight test just to show you everything that comes in the box. Actually, they're including extra screws. Now, these screws are all just kind of bunched together, so you're going to have to figure out which ones are which. There's a couple of nuts there in case you lose some nuts and stuff. So maybe they do include some shorter or longer screws if you are going to be using or not using the... Um, the propeller guard so that's good that they give you extra hardware in there and then really the only other thing in the box are the propellers so they give you one 
complete extra set of propellers. So at least that's enough to, you know, get us through a few crashes. If we crash really hard and bend or break some propellers, we'll be able to get back up in the air. But anytime you do buy a craft like this, make sure when you do buy it, you just, just order a bunch of propellers because um, if you're a good flyer, you're still gonna crash, you're still gonna break propellers. If you're a beginner flyer, you're gonna break even more. So make sure you have a bunch of propellers to keep you in the air. Anyways, I forgot to mention the antenna. It doesn't have any kind of cloverleaf antenna, so we are gonna have um, just a monopole FPV antenna here, which should be okay. I mean, this isn't really a long range flyer. I'm gonna definitely push it, see how far I can get in the park with this thing. I think I'm gonna do a home, around the home, inside the home flight, and then I'll also do a park flight, really push it through some trees and see how far we can go with it. Anyways, guys, um, enough talk on the bench. Let me charge up these batteries, get everything going, and let's get flying with this thing. All right, let's go fly. All right, guys, here at the park with the Baby Hawk and my Tyrannus QX7 all bound up, just did the flight modes and do any kind of tuning on the PIDs or anything, it's just all stock PIDs. And all I did was make sure I have the flight modes I need to fly this thing. And we're gonna give this a flight test on, this is the Walkera Rodeo 110 battery. This battery is a little heavy. This is like a 850 2S. So this may be a little heavy, but I'm gonna do line of sight with this. And this is the only um, 2S I have. I don't have any 450 or 500 milliamp 2S, unfortunately, with this connector. But I do have 3S 450s, and I'm gonna be putting a couple of those on for um, the FPV test um, through the trees and stuff. But first, let's do a line of sight, see how it performs, you know, so we can get a good view of it and what it can do. Then we'll throw on the goggles and do our FPV. Cables are gonna kinda hang on this one just a little bit. So plug it in there. Set this little guy down and we should be ready to go. So let's see this on arming. I do have the prop set to arm. I mean spin when I'm armed. So this is the switch I have for arming and then this is the one for my flight modes. This one doesn't have any beeper. So we're just gonna have to feel it. Anyway, arming. We're in attitude self-leveling mode. Launching. Yep, it does feel a little bit heavy with this 852S battery. But here's a good view of it. I can get a little close because I got the prop guards on. Look at that little thing. Woo! Nice. But I imagine I'm gonna have pretty good range with this micro receiver and the way I have these antennas way up here. It's like a good way to do it. Anyway, let's do a punch test on this battery. So from a hover, actually let's see what the yaw's like. So full yaw left. Wow, it gets going. It's going that way because I do have a breeze from five to 10 coming from that direction. Let's see what the punch test is on 2S 850 milliamp hour battery from a hover to full punch now. Oh yeah, it's struggling. Okay, so some struggle. It's too much, too much battery for it. But anyway, at least we'll be able to do our line of sight and then we'll pop in the 3S for the FPV. Full pitch forward, it won't, it shouldn't flip when we're in um, attitude mode. See how that's the maximum? It's a pretty good angle though. It's kind of, that's like 40 degrees, 50 degrees. Anyway, let's do full pitch forward and full throttle now. Yeah, it's gonna go down. It just has a little too much weight, not quite enough ump with this heavier battery. Let's try that again. Full pitch forward and full throttle now. See how it's gonna drive itself down. That's to be expected with this heavy battery. They say around 500 is supposed to be the one you want. Okay, let's try some different modes. Gonna go into Horizon. We can do some flips. This switch down in the middle. It's a little more touchy. And let's just try to punch it and do a right roll. Yeah, ah, it rolls really quick. This is all stock, keep in mind. You can hear some flutter on the full throttle. Probably those prop guards have something to do with it too, but you know, if you're good and you're in the open area, take those prop guards off. Make sure you have the right screws that aren't gonna dig into the motors and short them out. Front flip, oh, easy. Very simple. Oh yeah. This thing goes quick, nice. 
really easy to do stuff like that. Let's try a little bit more of a um, kind of arc right roll. Oh, <laughs> okay. A little bit too much momentum for this heavy battery. Let it just bounce and it's back up. I did hear the prop guard hit the uh, prop just really quickly, but it's fine. Okay, and the last mode, let's see what the yaw rate's like in this one. Is that the same thing or a little faster? Yeah, same. Oh, I don't want to lose orientation. Woo! Little baby hawk. Pretty cool. All right, last mode is, um, I think this is air mode I have it set to, either acro or air mode. No self-leveling. That would be a little more skilled to fly in this. Try a right roll. <laughs> yeah, this battery's a little too heavy. It would be good for like if you don't need that punching power with this battery, because you'll get a longer flight time, probably. But if you want punching power, like this is as hard as it's going to punch, watch. See? That gets this momentum up, but instant punch isn't good with 2S and an 850. Let's try a front roll. Wow, it goes really quick. I was trying to do a little bit more of a slow arc. Let's try again. There we go. Oh! Disarming. As soon as possible. And of course you don't really have to worry about damaging anything. You will hit, hear those prop guards just kind of nicking the blades once in a while when you hit hard. But I'd imagine um, that's all you're going to hear. It's still fine. Let's just exhaust this battery and then we'll do our FPV test. I want to give this a thorough review, you know? A little close-up shot. I don't know if you can get any closer than that. <laughs> uh, full pitch forward. I'm in attitude mode. Woo! Let's just try to fly around fast. Oh yeah, 3S on this is going to be awesome. Even with the prop guards. How quick this is. This is 2S with a super heavy battery. And it's doing fine. Woo! Nice. I was kind of full throttle to keep it from hitting the ground there. So indoors, I'd imagine with this kind of heavier battery, since you don't really need the punch indoors, just kind of cruising around your house. I think, I think this heavy battery will be fine and you'll get more flight time. I am in attitude mode. There's no flips right now. Because I want to just fly around fast. Show you guys how this thing is performing. Whoa, full throttle up. And then just keep in mind the wind is going to catch those prop guards. Blow it around a little bit more too. Oh, full throttle. Wow, it's lasting a while though. I'm hoping it has like a low voltage kind of cut off. You know what I mean? So the batteries don't get too low. Oh, <laughs> that was full throttle up. Cause I don't want to like kill this battery entirely. Oh, you know what we forgot to try? Let's try a full up and then I want to let full throttle off right now. Falling straight down. Oh, full throttle up. Tap the ground there. But look at that, it fell down. That's the cool thing about leaving the prop spinning a little, that setting in beta flight. Because the thing is not gonna flip around once you're full throttle off. Of course, you're not gonna drop quite as quick, but it's gonna co completely eliminate the problem of, um, you know, it flipping and falling when you don't have any throttle input. Unless you're in like air acro mode and at an angle. Woo! <laughs> oh man, I love flying these things quick. This thing's lasting forever. Oh, almost lost it there. Some wind. All right. Have you ever seen that shot of the baby hawk before? <laughs> Probably not. Awesome. 
Oh man, whoa! Oh, full throttle, it's getting weak. Getting pretty weak, getting pretty weak. I'll take it easy on it. Yeah, it's done. I was full throttle there and it was just going down, so. Um, does it have a cutoff? The battery just slightly warm too, that's great. Yeah, see how the props, oh, they are arming, okay. Let's see if it has a cutoff. Uh, am I ruining this, uh, forget it. I don't want to ruin this battery. <laughs> Okay, so it probably does have a cutoff, like really when it gets low, but you never really want to do that. So I'm gonna save this battery because this is the only 110 battery I have. Seems fine, not puffed, just slightly warm. Let's feel the motors. Wow, motors are cool. I know 3S is gonna get them warmer. I did a quick little 3S flight in my house and the motors did get quite hot, but of course there wasn't as much airflow. So let's see, after hitting any of those, the grass and falling and it hitting the props, the um, prop guards, let's see if there is any, no bent props, great. Everything looks fine. Let's slap on the goggles and give this thing a thorough FPV test on 3S, guys. This should be fun. Cool, so Baby Hawk's plugged in, ready to go. Everything's bound up. Let's slap these goggles on and let's fly. We are ready to go, arming. Lifting off. Whoa, I can already tell it's a huge more amount of power. <laughs> Probably not gonna have quite as much flight time, but let's see how it does. You can see some break up here. I think this is only 25 milliwatt. Just getting a little bit of break up. Whoa. So keep in mind, I am in um, I am in attitude mode right now, kind of flying around us. Let's not hit any power lines. There I am. Hello, guys. Switch into acro right away. I'm in acro mode now. Let's see what we can do. Okay, that's about 300 feet away. That's pretty cool. Oh, let's not hit the branch. Punch up. Getting a little bit of interference when we punch up a bit. I'm um, like directly above and behind me. Whoa. <laughs> I felt like I almost hit the power lines. Woo! Wow, you can definitely have fun with this though. Oh my goodness. I ain't no pro flyer, but I'm having fun. It's coming under these trees. A little bit of vibration with these prop guards. And who knows, maybe the props are giving us some problems oh oh okay power off let me go get that kind of didn't anticipate that tree branch there let me get that and let's try again okay so first crash and looks like nothing's wrong Got a little piece of grass and underneath the motor the motors definitely feel warmer on this 3s but still going strong wipe off this antenna I mean, this, the camera looks like the props are still fine. Let's keep on keeping on. Okay, recording again. Now, the thing about these Amway goggles is definitely. Am I still in acro? Yes. Okay, still in acro or air mode, whatever you want to call it. Let's see if we can get way the heck out here behind these trees without losing signal. Whoa! Lost FPV for a second. Look how far that is. That's gotta be three, 400 feet. And the FPV just got a little wonky. Hello. <laughs> oh, this is super fun. Let's try to do some flips here. Nice, no problem for this thing. But I will say, you can probably see that in the, in the video. I will say that there is some vibration on punching. And that could honestly be a lot of things. You know, that could be um, the propeller guards. It could be propeller. <laughs> okay, there's the fence. <laughs> Leave it to me to crash test this thing. Let's go get it, try again. Okay, so crash number two into the fence. 
Okay, let's see if anything's wrong with it. A little bit of grass splatter. Nothing is wrong at all. Okay, so I'd imagine our battery's getting low, so I'm gonna keep flying as much as possible here before we lose power. Okay, so arming again. So also keep in mind guys that this is actually evening. So you can see how the sun's to my back now here. Um, I'm gonna try to go through these trees if I can. Yeah, did it. That's far away, dude. The sun is to my front now, kind of, sorta. Oh yeah, still having a great time though. Ooh! <laughs> Didn't see that fence. Ultimate baby hawk crash testing. Let's go get it, try again. All right, third crash, I was just on the other side of the fence here. And that time I broke a propeller, well, bent a propeller, because I slammed so hard into the fence. Because for some reason I'm blind to fences. But battery slid up a little. So let me try to bend this prop back and we'll just exhaust this battery. I'd imagine it's almost done. But um, definitely is having a lot of power, just that flutter problem, which I'll definitely be trying to figure out. Okay, welcome back to the Crash Master channel. <laughs> just gonna keep flying until we completely exhaust this thing. All I did was bend that propeller back, flip down back into acro mode. And here we go, guys, up at the Kula Park, over here on Maui, and just gonna continue flying until, oh yeah, if you're easy on the sticks, this thing flies nice and smooth. Strange little vibration there coming back. Not sure what that was. All right, let's just try to fly low and fast. Yeah, so I don't know what that little jitter is. Who knows? But it still works. I really have a feeling... Whoa, I just went right through those power lines. Just barely. You saw that on the screen there. I really honestly have a feeling that it's these prop guards that, whoa, are making it... Um, have that little flutter problem. Hey, there's one car at the school. Must be doing some... Oh, it's getting weak. I better bring it back. Oh, <laughs> I didn't quite make it back. <laughs> Let me go get that. It was just getting super weak. Let's see if I can possibly... Will you let me get closer? Nope. Battery is completely exhausted. So I want to get that before a car runs over it. Okay, no damage whatsoever. Went ahead and retrieved it from the little school parking lot over there. And it's just totally fine. So I think what I'm gonna do, guys, is I'm gonna wrap it up for the park here, but I'm going to get home and do kind of an indoor-outdoor flight test with it. Um, the only cons I can think of here in the park, really the only thing whatsoever, is that it's got this weird punch flutter, even on the 3S. And I have a feeling that's from these prop guards, but I don't have the tool to take off these prop guards right now. So I'm gonna try to do that at home and see if that uh, mitigated the little bit of flutter by taking off these prop guards. I'll go ahead and do a recalibration on the ESCs in Betaflight software and try it without, without the prop guards as well in the house. So let's go try that and finalize and see how this thing does and then we'll do our full on pros and cons. Hey guys, welcome back. So I hope you enjoyed that outdoor flight at the park with a little baby hawk. I've been waiting for a really calm day to do this and it's really calm today so I think it'll work out good. And just before we get started, a couple little tidbits I wanted to share with you guys uh, before I fly. Um, some things I've found in between. So um, it seems like really quick that you don't really need all four screws on these pro propellers. Uh, two is just fine, they hold in there just fine, save you a little bit of weight. And um, that little bit of vibration, I don't know, I tried to tune that out and I couldn't really tune it out. And one more thing I found that I should share is um, it seems like you can put this thing into 200 milliwatt. I think I was flying 25 milliwatt at the park. You just hold that channel changing button in. If you hold it in and just hold it for a while, you'll see a little light pop up in the corner of this LCD display, a little red dot. And um, that should mean you're in 200 milliwatts. So we're gonna see how that works around the house. Hopefully it gives us a bit more power to get through the walls um, through this house here. 
Uh, one other thing that I noticed after that park flight was that one of the, as you notice, I took off the prop guards. Not really a super easy ordeal to take them off, but what I did notice is they do give you the right size screws. So if you do take off your prop guards, there's shorter screws in the box, in the bag. So make sure you put those short screws. It's the shortest ones all the way around. So redo all the screws into the motors with those short screws if you do decide to take off your prop guards. And I'm trying to find this one leg that actually cracked. There it is. So if you kind of look closely here, you're gonna see that I did put some uh, super glue around here. And for some reason, I don't remember really tightening this any tighter than the other screws, but uh, this arm, end of this arm kind of cracked here. And this was, I noticed this as I was taking off the propeller guard. So maybe just be careful. I don't think I hit anything too hard when I crashed in the park and I did have the prop guards on. So it looks like this plastic might be a little bit brittle if you um, put your screws in a little too tight. So just make sure that I just went ahead and gooped some super glue on there just to make sure that that thing was um, braced up for this flight. So anyway, let me go ahead and get these um, Amways on, get this recording for you, fly around the house. This is gonna be fun. See how it is kind of in and outdoor and see how the reception is if I'm just sitting here in the living room and flying this around my house in my neighborhood. Cool, let's see how it does. Okay guys, welcome aboard. Uh, I've got everything on here, recording the FPV. I'll have that in the screen there for you to see. And I'm just gonna attempt to fly out the back part of the house here. Um, this one's a little funny because the self-leveling, I don't know if it's because the flight controller is so like soft, you know, moving around in the frame, but the self-leveling doesn't seem to be that great. So I'm gonna switch straight into uh, acro air mode or air mode, I forget what I have it set at, but let's just start off in this. And of course, arming the propellers. And let's see, I might just crash it right away, but let's just see what happens. So arming. Go ahead and launch. You can see the little bit of flutter there. Oh, <laughs> of course, I couldn't even get out the door. Let's try again. Okay guys, so with this one, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna have to put a little bit of a handicap on this one because it's just too unstable for me to fly like in tight quarters around the house right now. Maybe once I warm up, I'll be able to, um, to do that. But for now, I'm just gonna launch right at the backyard door and let's see how it goes. <clears throat> okay, arming. There we go. Okay, so quite a bit of, um, quite a bit of wobble in the screen you can see there. Try a flip, I don't wanna get too far away from my house. So you see that vibration? I don't know what's going on there. I mean, I've got, whoa, birds. <laughs> it's still very controllable and good, but you can see when I give it any kind of acceleration, um, I don't know if it's prop wash or what. I watched a few like other people's videos of kind of how to tune that out and there's some things you can do like dampen the motors and stuff, but um, you know, out of the box, this is how it's flying with a couple of things I did to it. And it is pretty quick. Let's try a couple more tricks here. Well, the birds are really, <laughs> I think, are they attacking it? I don't wanna crash into my neighbor's house. But you can see on that hard acceleration how it just gets really wobbly. Um, it's still fun. And we'll kinda of go over through some of this in the pros and cons. And keep in mind, there is some camera tilt on this, so if you can't fly super fast, um, I'm even having a hard time kind of keeping up with the camera tilt because it just wants to go quick forward, you know, to keep a level horizon. Um, you may have a little bit of trouble if you're not used to this much camera tilt. Well, so going through the house, you can see that break up a little bit. Looks like there's the mailman. <laughs> Should we buzz the mailman? Oh, looks like he's dropping off a package. Let me go ahead. Uh, I'll just, I'll just let him leave a, a tag in the mailbox. 
or maybe he'll drop it off on the on the porch I don't want to interrupt this video oh punching up so I'm just circling around the house here um, not as precision as I would have wanted you know let's try to get a little lower here I hope I don't crash into the pool but let's just try a little bit closer proximity oh saved it Woo. ran into that palm frond and just saved save that thank you so <laughs> the mailman just dropped off a package sorry about that Woo, okay we're not dunking into the pool yet but we don't want to speak too soon I'm just gonna fly it until the battery kind of dies this one doesn't really have a beeper oh this is it's a fun flyer I just wish that vibration wasn't there you know it is very fun though you see that when I try to go quick and then I'm punching I just get that vibration I don't know what it is I think it's just the build of the whole thing Woo! it's definitely fun though I'm expecting the battery to die soon yes there's the battery <laughs> there's my cars and there's the mailman let's see I guess he's gonna go <laughs> anyway that's the battery on that flight let's bring it on in and do a quick little pros and cons see you later mailman thank you okay guys so we're back here on the table in the living room and we're gonna do a quick little pros and cons and first off check it out bummer I did break the motor off of this arm and that was just from that kind of not too bad landing there hit the tree and then it just fell to the ground when the battery died and I guess the integrity of that crack this is where I had super glued that crack that was beginning to appear um, in one or two of the screws and it just it looks like you know maybe the arm on this one either was defective wasn't molded that well or um, something I did just made give it gave it a little hairline crack and it just finally broke so you know easy to fix I can just get the frame um, these are very cheap online and just put all the guts back in the frame or glue it back together definitely recommend getting a new frame anyway um, let's go ahead and finish up our pros and cons so honestly um, I was expecting honestly a little bit better from the baby hawk um, as you could see I was having that kind of flutter problem and I don't know what that was I tried everything I could think of to fix it it seems like maybe if you dampen the motors a little bit I think what's happening is the flight controller is getting a little too much vibration and it's trying to compensate somehow um, and vibrating the whole craft in certain RPMs other than that it's pretty good it's got plenty of power um, you can see on 2, 2S I had a little bit of full throttle kind of like a rev limiter feeling almost 3s way better but the motors get pretty darn hot on 3s they've cooled down by now but when you finish flying in 3s um, it really they're really pretty hot you can barely touch them so that's what to expect there everything else is pretty good a um, couple of cons no beeper no OSD it seemed like the FPV was okay you know getting a little bit of quite a bit of breakup through the house with this little monopole antenna here um, so maybe you know like a circular polarized antenna pagoda or cloverleaf would definitely do better but that's going to be harder to protect I definitely recommend doing something like this with your antennas wires so other than those things pretty good you know it was very fast fairly easy to control I mean if you keep in mind this is fixed at a certain degree um, and I'm thinking that's I can't measure that right now but that looks like to be around 20 degrees of camera pitch and that's fixed so you can't really adjust that easily so if you're a beginner flyer it may be a little bit to get used to because if you want to fly really slow you're going to be looking up at the sky so this would be more for like intermediate flyers that can already fly with a little bit of speed as you can see I was a little bit reluctant to get down and close to my house when I first started flying outside around my house just because to get that level horizon you're going to be going pretty quick and so I had to kind of warm up before I could kind of get through um, lower on the ground and do some stuff 
closer to the house. Anyway guys, I think that kind of wraps it up. An overall decent package, not as great as I thought it would be, but a good start. If Emacs can make those refinements, you know, out of the box, that stuff should be taken care of with some QC and testing. So maybe strengthen the arms. The problem with the, these arms is you can see where the top body ends and it's just clipped to the bottom. So if you had a little bit of a different, more stronger structure around the bottom here, then it probably wouldn't crack as easy. And then also just be really careful with your your bolts, your screws, like I mentioned, so you don't crack this because this is a pretty hard, not really brittle, but it's a hard plastic. It's not really a super flexible plastic, so you might have this problem too. But for what it was, a really fun craft, and I hope they can improve it. And I'm definitely gonna be um, fixing it up, making some adjustments. Maybe I'll make some more videos after I fix it up and tune the flaws out. But I do hope you enjoyed that uh, full length review. We got to see it in the park. We got to see it over here in the house. Sorry I couldn't really fly this one in the house. It's not really a close proximity in-house flyer unless you have those prop guards on and you're on 2S. So I would not recommend flying 3S in the house at all. Stick to the little 2S battery they give you or even a little bit of a heavier 2S if you're gonna be doing slow in-house flight. Anyways, I will have the links down in the description of all the items I'm using here. And I really hope you enjoyed that review and it was informative for you. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.